Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian, and today I wanted to share with you how you can get this crazy tracking effect. Now let's talk about a couple of reasons real quick why you might want to be able to do this. I find this technique is really good for expressing a character's determination just because everything around him is shaky and crazy and he's just really consistent in the center here. And that also makes it a really good technique for composition, since all of this is kind of hard to see, and it's actually all pointing in towards the center because of the lens distortion node, I can pretty much guarantee that the viewer's eye is always going to be on the center of the frame here. So yeah, expressing determination of a character and also composition are two really good reasons why you might want to use this effect. Alright, so let's just get started here. I'm going to start by going up to File, New, and VFX. And I'm just going to quickly collapse these windows because who even uses those? And I'm just going to grab this and drag it up because sometimes the timeline is useful. Now let's just go right up to Open here and import our footage. It's probably a good idea to talk about the footage real quick here. The way I shot this was at a very high shutter speed. So once we start moving, you can see there is almost zero motion blur. And this is really important just because tracking something like this that's moving around so insanely would be extremely difficult if we had lots of motion blur going on. Okay, that's the footage out of the way. Let's just go on our timeline over here. I'm going to hold down shift and I'm just dragging my right mouse button around to get around on the timeline. I'm just going to go to frame 580 and say that's probably good. So if we go down to playback here and set end frame, there we go. That's good. And let's see. I think I started somewhere around 360. Yeah, here we go. Nice. So if we go to playback, set start frame, we've got this nice little section on our timeline, and this is what we're going to be tracking. So let's begin tracking here. We're only going to use one track, which is super nice, and it's actually pretty easy to track. So I'm just going to go right up to my nose here, hold down control, and hit left mouse button. I'm going to hit S to scale this guy up a little bit, just so it's covering a bit more ground. And then I'm going to go over here to the side panel where it says track, drop that down, and go track it forward. Now you can see, immediately, I put my thumb right in the way. That's annoying, but that's okay. If we go back a few frames, I'm just actually hitting Alt and using the scroll wheel to go around on the frames. But right about here, it's tracking nicely, but here, it's not. So I'm just going to hit G, grab that, and place it back where it was supposed to go. And if you want to lock your view to the track, that helps a lot sometimes. So you just hit L to do that. There we go. Back it up. Yep, that's nice. Is this good? Yeah, that's all good. Nice. So let's continue tracking it forward. Oh, we lost it again. Just going to grab that and move it back right where it needs to be. Very nice. Now this can be kind of slow if your track is big, and especially if you're using 4K footage, which I happen to be. Okay, I finished tracking here. Only took me a few minutes. Really not that bad at all. And as I had just mentioned, this is 4K footage. And the reason, I'll show you in a second here, is because when we go over to stabilization and check this, and then just make sure our tracker is selected and go plus, Okay, so the reason is when we hit auto scale, what it'll do is actually make it so that we won't be seeing everything that's going on here. We'll be zoomed in quite a bit so that the frame isn't going all over the place like it's doing right now. We'll see that here in a second in compositing. So let's jump over there. Let's check use nodes, get rid of this window, and we don't need render layers. So I'm going to select this and hit X, get that out of there. Shift A, input, movie clip, here we go. Let's select our movie, and with Node Wrangler enabled, I'm going to go Control, Shift, and left click this. We got our viewer node here, very nice. Then I'm going to take Image, drop that into the composite. I'm going to hold Shift and right click and drag across these, and that way we've got a nice little Y. Something very important to do before we get too far into this is go over to Color Management and set this from Fill Link to Standard. There we go. Things liven up a bit over here. Okay, nice. Let's work on our footage here. I'm going to go Shift A, add in a distort, and stabilize 2D. Once again, select our footage, and as soon as we do that, well, maybe not as soon as we do that, but once we do that, and it takes a second to catch up, you can see it kind of zooms in a bit, and now the borders of our frame here will be consistent, and that's really nice. Now, if we were to render this out right now, we'd get our nice effect, but let's go over the top just a little bit more, add in some nice stuff. So I'm going to go color, color balance. I'm going to make sure the gamma is a little bit blue, just because I like the way that looks. And things are pretty bright here, so I'm also going to drop that down a little bit. Now you can mess with the gain if you want, but I think this is all right for now. I'm just going to box select this stuff at the end here. Grab that, move it over, and make space for a Shift-A, Distort, and Lens Distortion node. 
Now, most of the time, it's generally not a good idea to turn up the dispersion too much, but right now, since we don't have any motion blur at all, well, let's just, uh, let's just crank this up to a 0.1. Boom! Look at that. That is way too much in most cases, but I like it in this case, so I'm gonna do it, and nobody can stop me. And also, it's not cin cinematic enough, so let's make it more blue. Hey, there we go. That's nice. Okay. Now, once again, if we were to render this out, it would look garbage. And that is because it's in 1080p right now. And then that would just crop it out and you couldn't see most of what's going on. So let's set this to be 4K footage. Okay, nice. Now you can give this a name and select where you want it to go. PNG image sequence is good. I'm going to use an image sequence in a minute because I'd like to just crunch it down to 1080p. But hey, once you get that stuff all set up, we can go render and render animation. Okay, I imported that image sequence into the video editor, rendered it out again as 1080p, and now we've got something that's a little bit more manageable. And if we just take a look here, you can see, hey, that's pretty cool. All right, so we've got our effect here, and this is pretty much the end. But if you found this useful and you're interested in visual effects, I've created a special tutorial for you on how to integrate CG objects into live action footage. And I've got five tips for you in this tutorial. And if you click the link in the description, that'll actually lead you to an email sign up, and I'll make sure that tutorial is the first thing I send you. Now, another thing to be aware of when you're on this email list is that every week, whenever I upload a tutorial, I just mail out to the list so that you can keep up to date. But hey, I hope you found this useful, and I hope you have an excellent day, and cheers!